welcome to the Level Up REI podcast. I am Lisa Hilton, founder of Excel Capital, a real estate investment firm that focuses on providing real estate investment opportunities to Caribbean investors who want to invest in the United States. Outside of investing in real estate, island girl that hails from the Cayman Islands, and I live in sunny Southern California. I am a lover of the outdoors, water sports, adventures, and I'm a personal development junkie. Each week, I will bring you an episode that will help you to level up your real estate investing through tackling mindset, expanding what is possible, and introducing you to real estate investors who will revolutionize the way you see and think of real estate. Get ready to level up. Here we go. Welcome everyone to the Level of REI podcast. This is your host, Lisa Hilton. I am back with another amazing episode. So this is a part of my series on um, highlighting experiences, having conversations with passive investors. Um, And I am so excited to have two friends of mine on the podcast today. They not only passively invest, but they are also active investors. So excited to, you know, share their stories about their journey to passive investing um, with you on the episode. So to jump into their introduction. So James Lee and Edwin live in Boston, Massachusetts, raising their beautiful three-year-old and six-year-old daughters. Uh, Five years ago, they started to research financial independence strategies and concluded that real estate would be a primary vehicle to help them in building generational wealth for their family. Since then, they have actively and passively invested in real estate, primarily out-of-state deals. In addition to their primary residence, they have a sing- two single-family residences in Florida, one triplex in Rhode Island, and they're also passive investors in a syndication of a 250-unit apartment building in Atlanta. Um, they're focused on improving their financial education and plan to invest in more syndication and acquire more investment properties in the future. So welcome to the show, James Lee and Edwin. Thank you for having us, Lisa. <laughs> yes. <There you> <laughs> oh man, this is such a treat. Um, I will say it, it feels uh, like coming full circle. Um, I'm pretty sure, Edwin, you can remember when I sent you like a little snippet video of like when I got my mic and I was yes. like, oh, I am getting ready to podcast. <laughs> Yeah, it's like I've heard you talk about that since the beginning, and finally I can be in the podcast. With you. <laughs> we a conversation. Yes, 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 yes. And this particular episode is focused on passive investing, but we can definitely, you know, obviously touch on some of the active stuff that you guys do because I know that you guys are active folks as well. Yeah, um, Exactly, exactly. So can you, in your bio, you know, I touched a bit about what it is, um, like how you guys got started so five years ago, but just wanted to, you know, sort of touch back from your voice specifically, how you guys currently invest in real estate these days. So we are uh, involved in a variety of things with real estate, right? We're constantly, I think it's, it's probably the fault of the, of the, internet age that we're in today, we're, we're constantly bombarded with lots of different ideas of how you can actually get in, involved in real estate. And so we're always kind of like, well, maybe we want to touch on this, maybe we want to touch on that. Um, but we started off with a, a single family home um, purchase and wanted to have that rented out. Um, and the experience we got with that was that it was a lot of work, even though it was remote and we had a manager. And so we started talking about, well, do we want to continue down this road of managing properties especially even remote and um or do we want to go into it a little bit more passively where we have a little bit more time we at the time we had one daughter and then we started we had our second daughter just Mm -hmm. born and so we started realizing that we didn't have as much time to invest in real estate as we thought we did and so we started thinking well how else can we stay involved in real estate investing but not actually be buyers of properties that we then have to manage and we started going down the road of, okay, what other options are there besides, you know, actively investing um, in real estate? And that's when we started learning about REITs and E-REITs. Right. Awesome. And things like that. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, how did you particularly run across like syndications and like REITs? Was it just primarily from your own passive uh, reading and researching online? So we did a lot of podcasts. Mm-hmm. Like, we, uh, we listened to a lot of bigger podcasts mm-hmm. and talking about syndications and different types of passive uh, investment in real estate. Right. We did more research on syndication. And we have friends that were involved in uh, raising money for syndications. So we connected with them and they presented a deal to us. Right. The deal was like at the right time because we had money available at the time. Right. Also, uh, I were able to, like, we didn't need the money right away. Sure. We did, research, we did a due diligence. And that's when we decided that it was the best thing for us to invest at that time. Got it. Um, so diving into that, because, you know, these episodes here on, you know, conversations with passive investors is really to like sort of help people who are thinking about coming into the idea of passive investing. And some of the things you touched on there was like due diligence, um, bigger pockets, listening to podcasts, um, like for you, like what were some of the key things that you looked for when investing, when making the decision to invest passively that you would share with someone who's thinking about investing? Right. Uh, the first thing that we, we, we kind of went down the road was, do we have enough money to invest, right? Mm-hmm. Listening to syndications and things of that nature, we thought that, oh, this is only for, you know, the super rich yes. and, and the, you know, celebrities and, and folks like that, that it wasn't really accessible to, to everyday folks who were looking to invest their money. Um, and that's when we found out that maybe we were wrong, right? So right. that there is opportunities to us, but we ourselves have to kind of make the determination as to whether or not we had the money, um, the passive money, the money that was available for it, right? We didn't need it in the next three to six months. So therefore we could invest in this deal. We didn't need it in the next three to five years for syndication deals. So therefore we could invest into one of those types of deals. Right. And the second is the return on investment. Yeah. What returns would we get in, if we uh, go into that deal? Like, are we going to get more if we invest in the stock market? Are we going to get more if we invest in uh, buying another home? Are we going to get more if we just like put the money there, like I need interest in a bank account? Right. So we usually look for something that guarantees more than 8% of, of, of cash return on an annual basis. Right. And, and make sure that the returns, are, it's not just like on paper, it's actual return, like the market makes sense. Right. Someone is investing like in a market where nobody uh, wants to live, that wouldn't make sense to us. But if they're investing in like some uh, 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 up and coming market like uh, Florida, Jacksonville, Tampa, or Atlanta, or uh, like uh, some other place like Salt Lake City, like right. we would be interested in looking at these uh, uh, locations. Uh, the other thing is like what what is the experience and qualifications of the um, on the deals? Mm-hmm. If they have had experience before, if they have done mm-hmm. the, uh, deals before, we felt more comfortable uh, giving them a money. Right. Awesome. Yeah. So which then sort of ties me now onto the next, you know, question, which is, have you had any passive investing horror stories and like any, what you've learned from that experience? (laughs) I think it's a little early, but maybe, I don't know. It's it's still early going. So I think we have more horror stories with stock market than we do with real estate. (laughs) But, uh, I just yeah. like more our stories with like a single family home. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The, our active side of real estate has definitely been more challenging than the, than the passive side. I mean, for all intents and purposes, it's once you, the hard part is, is doing that, that due diligence period, right? Finding the, the, the mm-hmm. right person to invest with. And I'm going to say person. Or people, right? right. Those are the keys that we kind of were looking for is that is the person we're investing with, um, knowledgeable experience and all those mm-hmm. things that Edwin had said. And do we trust that we can give them our money and we'll find the returns? And so far, everything's been going exactly as they had promised, right? Like right. The returns and if, and you know, we had the, um, the COVID situation come up recently where everybody was wondering, would we continue to see our rent, you know, receive rents? And both on the active side, we were concerned about that. And then from the passive side, we said, okay, well, if that happens, what, what's that gonna look like for more returns? And so far, the, the company we invested with has been strong. So, 
Yeah, that's awesome. You know, and I think, I guess my next question to you, sort of based on what you just said, this sort of leads perfectly into it. The beautiful thing about you guys is that you have experience on both sides. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys are active, you continue to be active, and you continue to look to acquire properties that you'll continue to actively manage both near you and, and far away from you. And then you're also still, you know, open to passively investing and have passively invested in the past. So given that coming from that, you know, experience, like what could you share with someone in terms of what you see as the pros and the cons of choosing each path? Uh, if you're a, an active investor, you need to have time because it does require a lot of time to manage the properties. Even if you have a property manager, you still have to answer their emails, you still have to answer their questions, you still have to think, okay, uh, they just called me about termite. Do I want to do like a termite like, uh, repairs? Or like, do I have the time to do research about termites? Do I have the time to research contractors so that the contractor can go and help that property manager? So it's still like a lot of time involved in, uh, in managing these properties, whether they're close or defer. The, the second thing is uh, that I will say is a cons to active um, uh, uh, real estate is you need to trust people. Like you need to trust your property manager, you need to trust your tenants, you need to trust uh, your contractors, you need to trust like anybody that's going to be in contact with the property. Like that's like one person that can create real damage. Mm -hmm. So that's a con. Like the uh, a poor is like you have total control, and and I like to have control sometimes. So I like, for example, we just got some new tenants for one of the units, and I enjoyed like the experience of uh, interacting with people applying for, for for the unit. So I had control in choosing who my tenants were going to be. Right. So that's a, a con. That's a pull for me. Uh, and, and then the good thing is like all the deductions you can get. Right. right. Definitely. So seeing all of that, like we're, we've kind of like thinking, okay, we definitely need to have a balance of both, mm -hmm. right? We want to continue to invest in syndication deals because the passive nature of it allows us to not think about it. Right. right. Once, once you've trust in the company, the, the partnership that you've kind of gone down, you said, Hey, we're going to give you our money. The things that you said you're going to do, please deliver on it. That's the end of thinking for us. It's very similar to having a savings account, mm -hmm. right? You put the money in the savings account and then you say, hey, the bank hopefully will continue to give us dividends every month until, until we pull the money out. Um, and that's really the, 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 benefit, the beautiful part about the passive side of investing for us. Um, there's a lot less effort that goes yes. into it from our perspective. Um, and I wish we had known more about all these different opportunities that were present at the beginning of our journey because then we might have, you know, accelerated the, mm -hmm. the, the, the investment side actually um, so that we could have you know gotten a lot more um, um, traction on the syndication side but had we known that you know that you needed to be an accredited investor for instance we didn't know that at the beginning yeah we have to, right we would have exactly got it got it got it you know um how like so this is a bonus question um Sort of thinking about syndications, would you say that it takes a little bit more capital to get into syndications than it does to start actively purchasing properties on your own, given your experience? No, absolutely not. It's, it's a little bit less. So it's a little bit less. It's a little bit less. I mean, it depends on the location that you're investing in, but for us in Boston, it's significantly less, right? Right. I mean, with the syndication deals, um, Twenty-five, fifty thousand dollars can get you started in in, mm -hmm. in to one of those um, opportunities. Yes. Whereas to buy a property in Boston, you talk about at least a hundred thousand dollars to start off. So, um, right. you know, it's it's all about your market, where you're looking to invest, and which one is going to be the, the better opportunity. But definitely, the syndication deal I felt was a little bit easier to get into from the liquidity um, liquidity side. Just from the perspective of are you qualified? You need to have relationships like pre-existing relationships with somebody or you have to be that incredible investor in order to get even approached mm -hmm. with a syndication deal was the part that we didn't know at the beginning got it um and then for you know for other passive investors who are thinking about you know the part of trying to find an operator, try to find that person that they feel that they could make that investment in any keys around that 
any um, advice you could give around like how they could go about finding that those good contacts? So I would say like once you get into a, a syndication, you'll be approached to get into many more. So the first step is to get the first one. And to get the first one, you need to do a lot of research and get to know people. Sometimes it's really challenging to get to know people and to do research. Right. But you have the internet, you have podcasts, you have reading materials. So start looking for uh, 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 people that are actively in the podcast industry. To get the first one done, like there are a lot of people like providing like free literature, free education. Right. Podcast. Podcast like yourself. Like yourself. So get right. into like yourself. Right. Get in, like if you listen to a good podcast, you like the person, you like what was shared, contact the person. Right. Like email them, ask them questions, go on their Facebook group, go on their webpage, and never hesitate to put your email there. Because once you put your email there, you will start getting more education, more materials. And if you read something that you like or you don't like, uh, uh, like email back and give your comments, like ask for a phone call, ask for a conversation. Right. Th that, that's really what the most challenging part, because once you're in, I can say like you, you're in like forever and you will get more uh, opportunities to participate in this type of deals. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Um, and then last bonus question before I get into my level up questions is, you know, one, you guys are married, you have kids and you're still choosing to invest in real estate and you're doing it actively and passively. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure someone who's listening today is probably in your shoes. They're also married. They also have mm -hmm. children. They also probably have that desire, but don't know maybe how to navigate like how to do it. What advice would you give to other married couples who have children who want to invest um, in the path that you're doing at the moment? The ideal situation is where you can actually, you know, use the, the experiences and knowledge of your partner, you know, to work on these different um, investment opportunities that present themselves, right? So we both have different strengths and we can rely on each other to kind of go down that road of like, you know, I like to get hands on and involved in things and Edwin likes the, the human centric side of things and interacting with people and talking and, and getting to know folks beforehand. Whereas I'm like, let's just go do the deal. Then I can actually. <laughs> 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 it's, and so it's kind of like one of the, like the, that juxtaposition that allows us to kind of see a, a wide array of opportunities that are out there. And, uh, and I think that helps, right? But if you're just kind of the person who's going out there by yourself, I mean, at the beginning, I was going by myself. Edwin, yes. was, Edwin had her own um, ideas of what she wanted to do for investment. It, it allowed us to kind of like, you know, um, just go down that avenue of what is it that we're interested in and then come back to somebody and say, hey, what do you think about this? And yes. then right. explain it. Like, it's kind of like the, if you could teach somebody that it, then you know you know it. So mm. if you, that you want, convince your partner that you want, that we should get involved in something like this, then you then at that point, it becomes a lot easier because you can just start saying, okay, since we both agreed on this, I think this makes sense that we should continue down this real estate path as opposed to stock markets or, you know, buying collector cars or something. Right. And, then, and for me, you need to have the same long-term vision. Like we exist to create long-term uh, uh, growth and, and assets and wealth for family. Mm -hmm. It's small. It's probably for like, I don't know, many, many years. Mm -hmm. Start like by uh, working on your goals, working on your visions. Like, what do you want to achieve, and why are you doing this? Right. And get into the same page. Like, we want to like in five, ten years. This is what we want to do. Like, you can get into it first. But at, for me, for us, it helped us that we were able to talk and write these goals and discuss them, and we always focus on them. Got it. Got it. Um, and then, lastly, advice for when things don't go as planned and how you guys continue to work together to find solutions to move forward? Uh, for me, like, the, you always, like, some place, like, somehow, like, things will not work out. Like, nothing is ever perfect. Like, I always think, what is the lesson learned? It's not like, what, what did we lose? But what right. did we lose? And we always gain the experience for it. And it can be, like, it can be a, a challenging and painful to lose money. Right. Because like the first couple of months, you're like, oh, we just lost so much money. We could have done so many things. Right, <laughs> right. Money. 
But at the same time, like we learn so much more in experience. Right. And we learn what not to do in the future as well. Yes. Awesome. 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 Oh man, this is good. This is good. I love it. Um, so now we get to the level up questions. These are my questions I ask all my guests. The first one is what are you grateful for in your life right now? Uh, right now I'm grateful for being in good health. Yeah. We are in good health. My kids are in good health. James is in good health. I'm in good health. So I think in the age of COVID, this is something that we, we should all be grateful for. Yeah. I'm most grateful for that. Awesome. Um, and then what has attributed to your success and continuous growth? Oh, man. I think it's, it's resilience, right? We, 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 we have our ups, we have our downs. Yeah. And I think the idea is that, you know, the downs are going to come. Like it's, mm-hmm. We are here on this earth with obstacles and, and, and hurdles that are always going to come and present a challenge to us. And the key is to just keep going. You have your goal, strive, you know, keep going after it. And, and even when you think you've achieved it, there's more to it than just what's this, you know, the surface level of what you've scratched. You just want to keep leveling up. Yep, definitely. <laughs> and then lastly, what do you now know that you wish you knew at the beginning of your journey? Uh, I wish we had known more about real estate. Like the first big investment that I made with James Lee was to uh, buy a primary home. Mm-hmm. And at that time, we didn't know a lot about real estate. So I wish I'd known more about real estate at the time. I wish I'd, I'd known more about uh, syndication, like the different type of assets that people can invest in. Right. Like I wish I'd known more that you can talk to people and ask them any questions. And there are like many resources that you can get, like you can read and educate yourself. Right. And, so like, just like sometimes like we've, we've seen things and we've talked about it, but we never took actions. But all, like, so I wish we had, had the courage to just like, just do it. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, the key, the key part about the deep dive on Edwin's statement of I wish we had known more at the beginning was that mm. you know, there was a bunch of opportunities that presented mm-hmm. it that we didn't know were available to us yes. when we were buying our home, right? The money we used for mm-hmm. down our home, we could have purchased a multifamily as opposed to a single family home. God. We could have invested it in a in a syndication deal and or or a, an, an investment property right. and continue to rent because we were thinking about our specific market in mm-hmm. Boston and how expensive it was and that we need it was we need to buy now because the price might go up a little yes. bit higher our rents were going up right. versus what other opportunities were there for us to invest our money to see a different type of uh, a yield right like we just didn't know yeah. And the, the good thing is, like, there are so many other ways you can invest in real estate and passively as well. Like, you can invest in, like, uh, multifamily storage units, like, building offices, like, retails, hotels. Like, there are so many things that you can get yourself into with, no, with like, minimal uh, uh, research and minimal actions. Mm-hmm. Which, like, we add that level of knowledge, like, uh, like, 10 years ago, like, 7 years ago. Because we would have made, like, I would say, like, more age decisions right that for the long in journey got it and this is an extra question but like as you know since you brought that up there mm-hmm. um do you think about investing in other things other than just apartments uh yes yes i do like recently like uh james lee i know he's been looking at notes and i've been looking at storage units mm-hmm. uh, uh, uh mobile home as well Right. Yeah. Mobile home parks. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, like we're doing a research right now and we also looking at vacation rentals because we like to go on vacations. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I would suggest people to just like explore uh, what is available with like your lifestyle. Like if you like to go on vacations, maybe you can have vacation rentals. Right. If yourself living in an RV, like we've always dreamed to live in an RV, like travel like all over the US. Right. Well, um, park is what you should be looking into. Yeah. So that's where the friend is for us, just like, like trying to find a way where we can match what we like with investment opportunities. Yeah, so important. So important. Awesome. I'm so happy you guys came on the show. I really appreciate it. Lisa, finally. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the invite. It was worth it. And it was painless. 
So if my listeners want to, you know, reach out to you guys and like connect with you, what is the best place that they can do that? Um, we are on bigger pockets through Edwin, yes. um, through Edwin's account. <laughs> so <laughs> look up, look us up there. Um, but you can reach out to us via email. It's probably the easiest way. Um, EJ Concord, R E um basically it's our first initials um edwin and james lee conquered uh, real estate um, um at gmail.com is the easiest way for us to, to, to get in touch with us awesome so i'll put that in the show notes as well so that way thank people you. can have that all right guys thank you so much thank you lisa thank you, thank you so yes much. Thank you guys for spending this time with me on the Level Up REI podcast. I am so grateful that you stopped by. If you could take one second to share this episode with someone you think would love it, that would be absolutely amazing and we would be forever grateful. Also, please leave us a review if you feel so moved by going to iTunes and giving us an honest thought or comment and tell us what you would love to hear more of. It would really help us in helping even more people invest confidently in real estate as well as leveling up their entire life. Lastly, please visit my website, www.lisahilton.com to check out my passive investing made easy series, as well as my Caribbean investor edition. Everything Caribbean investors need to know to level up their passive real estate investments today. So until next time, keep leveling up.